Golden Boy is current promoter see a future superstar they just need to move him up the right way put him up against the right opponents in front of the right crowd that's a superstar potential in the main the blue corner wearing red trunks trim and blue white he weighed in 174 and one half pounds in 25 professional fights, his record, 22 victories, including 14 knockouts. With three defeats, here is the hard-hitting light heavyweight from Miami, Florida, by way of Guantanamo, Cuba, presentado, Sullivan Barrera! Across the ring stands his opponent, fighting in the red corner, wearing red trunks, trimmed in silver and black. He weighed in also 174 and one half pounds. In 41 professional fights, he is perfect in the ring. 41 victories, including 27 big wins coming by way of knockout. He is the former and first Mexican WBO super middleweight champion of the world. Boxer Chief second. Boxer Chief second. Okay, go. Belt line is good here. We're a little high here, so we're going to go to the top of the letters. Gentlemen, you've got my instructions in the back. Protect yourselves at all times, so listen to my commands. Touch them up. Back to your corner, gentlemen. There's a shared opponent between Ramirez and Barrera. That would be Jesse Hart. Ramirez has two close wins over Hart. Barrera lost to him in his last fight. I spoke to Jesse this morning. He says the key for Barrera pressure. He says Ramirez did not like pressure. For Ramirez, the jab. The key is not to let Barrera get set. Barrera makes excellent decisions. He makes moves in split seconds. Use your jab and give Barrera something to think about. And now it's time for the main event. Now thinking about it, now it's time to actually watch the fight. Zerto Ramirez against Sullivan Barrera. Zerto in the red, Barrera in the red with blue and white. A light heavyweight contest right now. Zerto, the southpaw, 41 and 0 against Barrera, the 39 year old Cuban, at 22 and 3 with 14 knockouts. Barrera has a history of starting cold. I don't know if it's a fragile chin, but he, he gets dropped. He was dropped in the third round by Andre Ward. He was dropped by Joe Smith in the first round. A couple of times by Jesse Hart. So we'll see if Ramirez will want to ju jump on him and chin check. Sullivan Barrera. Yeah, it's probably the biggest weakness in Sullivan Barrera. He's got good skills, power in both hands, but he does go down. And he goes down with counter shots, mostly left hooks, because he's so top heavy when he comes in. He doesn't faint much. He tells you the truth every single time with the punches. Barrera came in, he took no prisoners early in his career. He won his first five fights by knockout inside the open two rounds. Just one of his nine KOs since have come inside two rounds. So your guy's point early on a little bit tentative the storylines for these two are amazing Barrera made his professional debut on the same night as Zerto taking down Anthony Adorno within 57 seconds in Miami meantime Zerto was also claiming an opening round TKO that was in his hometown of Mazatlan a slightly quicker time of 41 seconds so these guys go way back Zerto trying a couple jabs right now against Barrera. It's both fighters sizing each other up. A little combination there from Barrera. Zerto became the first Mexican boxer to win a major world title at super middleweight when he took the WBO title in 2016. That was from the German Arthur Abraham, that 12 round decision win at MGM in Las Vegas. Because he's feeling much better at 175. He's trying to become the second uh, Mexican light heavyweight champion as well. Gonzalez being the first. 
Signing with Golden Boy, he said it was real simple. Oscar's a legend. You got a name like Oscar De La Hoya, that kind of imprimatur. That's why Zerno wanted to be a part of it. Well, Zerno's backstory is, is really anything but simple. Leaving top rank is one of the more odd moves, given that he could have fought for a real title under their back. And coming in at 41-0 is Zerno, and listen, for decades, if you're a boxing fan, you know Rocky Marciano's 49-0 career record was what people looked to. Now it's Floyd Mayweather, 50-0 the new target. And clearly, Ramirez has explicitly stated his goal is to surpass that benchmark of 50-0 and capture second world title at 175. I'd like to clarify something. There's no such thing as a 50-0 record. <laughs> Several fighters have zoomed past 50-0. There is a 51-0 by Ricardo Lopez, another great Mexican. But that's not the point. Other fighters have gone past 51-0 undefeated. They've just okay, kept stop, fighting stop, stop. No and eventually no lost. Excellent clarification from Chris Mannix, boxing so far. Just, that just be, keeps getting mentioned. You get to 51-0. You going to quit then? <laughs> Uh, I can tell you that Zerno had 41 of those, 27 knockouts, and this is a guy which he fought just once since April of 2019. The 30 year old is now looking to make a major push. Trying to become a force now in this division. A minute into round two. Barrera, he's got something to prove. He enters having lost two of his last three fights. The only win during the stretch, a lopsided 10 round decision over overmatched tough guy Sean Manningham. Good little punch there. And there's that right uppercut that Sudo is known for. He has, he has vicious left and right uppercut, but Barrera coming right back, slinging away with left and right hooks. Sudo trying the uppercut there. Normally tall fighters. Extremely tall fighters like Sudo avoid body shots and uppercut because it makes himself vulnerable to counters, but not Sudo. He comes right in and looking for those shots, not avoiding the firefight inside. It's interesting. Normally, you have 41 fights, it's near the end of your career. And at 30 years of age, I mean, listen, Canelo started early. He had a different career arc. And there's a different career arc sometimes, Chris, with Mexican fighters. But it's interesting how Canelo had all his early fights early on, where Zerdo, it's been a different storyline for him. It's because Mexicans don't have as much of the amateur background that a lot of these fighters have. So they learn on the job. They, they, they make their bones in their early, early rounds. You had a great amateur background. Backyard barbecue balls. <laughs> 2000 Olympic trials, too, man. Contender, baby. We'll get in that video at some point of those barbecue balls, but. See, this is about Zordo. He's got lots of charisma. These two guys probably sparred eight years ago uh, when he was 1-6. They did. They know each other. You can tell that Barrera is comfortable with, with the, the length and the, the size of the right Bears. They hold his chin in the air, and that's what Barrera is taking advantage of. But coming into this, look at the copy box numbers. Ramirez is generally a busy fighter. Those 63 punches per round, 35% of those are body shots. So we'll see if that continues, especially if we can get that power punching going here in this light heavyweight matchup. Serge, I've seen a lot of Sultan Barrera fights. He just looks old in this one. I don't think he looked old throwing that right hand right there. I just think he's, he's fighting cautious. He's fighting the older fighters fight. You know, he's winning. He's losing quiet rounds, but he's not losing, you know, uh, rounds where he's getting hit a lot. Look at Barrera and that history. Listen, that Andre Ward fight had that blemish for Barrera, but... Andre Ward's also the International Boxing Hall of Fame. Hasn't lost a boxing match of any kind since he was 12. So say this for Pereira, at least he's willing to take the challenge presented ahead of him. He's always willing to take the challenge. Uh, and he has some positives on that resume. He broke the jaw of Joe Smith and won that fight. Joe Smith now a light heavyweight champion. So there's talent within him. It's just age catches up with him. He never got that big an opportunity sometimes, but he's some of argue, but that's right now is what Zordo is looking for. This big opportunity right now, pretty well known. Signing with Golden Boy, Oscar's a legend. When it comes to older, experienced fighters, you know, if, if they can win quiet rounds, they will. If they can actually stay in the fight, you know, the longer the better for them because they have that experience and they, they know how to close, close strong. But when you have that much power, one punch can change things. 
Zerto's last 12 fights, I've seen him box for an average of 10.7 per fight. Earlier in his career, the first 29 fights in his career, they went 3.8 rounds. So, later in his career, more of these fights have gone the distance, as you can see. Brera right now trying to get inside a minute left here in round three. And the competition picked up significantly over the last few years. Brera landed a nice right up to the bottom of Ramirez. I think that kind of shook up Ramirez, backing him up. Zerto went up back there. Able to evade any damage. He quickly backs up, trying a combination right now. Barrera! Oh, man! Zerto's shot connected, and Barrera down to his knees. Five, that was a body shot six, that caught Barrera seven, clean. Eight, spun him right? around, put him in the canvas. That was a body shot right to the liver. That's going to have lasting effects. Sudo was going to go right back down there looking for the same punch. Barrera was able to... He paid that one shot, but now 10 seconds left here in round three. Listen for that bell. It's also going to open up the right hooks upstairs for Sudo. <laughs> hey, right there. Way to hold up. And Take this it. is a knockdown right here. Sudo was missing upstairs with the upper body movement, but that left hook right there. And that's going to have lot, a, a lasting effect. But credit to Barrera. He got up and he, he weathered the storm a little bit right there. And his body language tells me that, that he got over it right there. But we'll see if Surdo wants to go back to that same shot. He goes down in the first three rounds only to come back stronger in the second half of the fight. He's got Zerdo right where he wants <laughs> No, not. But we've seen no, this no, before. No, 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 no. Well, speaking of seeing this movie before, Zerdo Ramirez, by the way, in terms of his English, has improved over time. You see Chris Van Scorpio, by the way, Chris. You've got 30 to 26 right now for Zerto. Yeah, three rounds to one with the 10-8 round in that third round. Zerto controlling the pace of this fight, landing heavier shots. I did think that third round was probably Barrera's best of the fight, but that knockdown gives Ramirez a 10-8 round. Zerto's a guy who's, listen, fascinating in the ring, but also outside the ring, open up the gym. His English is improved with Back to the Future. Right now, where we're going, we don't need Rhodes. This is at 1.21 gigawatts. He keeps fighting like this. Nice counter there from Barrera. Yep. Oh, and he lands it. Same punch downstairs to the liver. Wow. Carpensi's ribs inside 30 seconds. So there's no denying he's got power in those punches. Yeah, Much of this crowd eager to see Zordo. They got a couple of great champs. Bernard Hopkins and Oscar De La Hoya. Thrilled to see Zordo step up in this one. This is how the fight ended. As we take a look back, Zerto versus Barrera, and just too much for Barrera to try to overcome. Oh, right there. You could see Barrera was getting ready to sling a right hand. Sudo caught him, caught him with that left hand right on the right side, and it was a late reaction by Barrera. And that's what body shots do, man. Late reactions all the time. Right there, you could see that he wanted to come back. Elbow came down. Had to go down. Body shots makes, makes cowards of us all. <laughs> it's well said, man. They destroy the body, the crowd will fall as well. And Zerto, once he sensed that weakness there, oh man, you feel for Barrera, just wilting.
Ramirez coming in had secured back-to-back -back stoppage victories. First time since a run of four straight knockouts in 2014, and this one gets stopped relatively early. When you look at his career, especially lately, those fights are generally between round six and ten. This time he gets stopped in the fourth. This was a really impressive performance by Zerlo. And he followed the, the game plan. He said he was going to be patient, smart, because he has the better skills, use his reach, but he will stop him. And he definitely stopped him. He's got better skills, he had more confidence, and he felt that he could finish the fight early. He did tell us in the fighter meetings, he felt that Barrera was vulnerable, and clearly Zerto knew something. These guys sparred eight years ago. Uh, they were 160 at the time, so some histories clearly saw it. Classy sportsmanship between the two, but now it's the guy with the cowboy hat who's gonna ride off into the sunset. This is like city slickers. Round number four, referee Thomas Taylor steps in, puts a hog to the bell. Your winner by KO victory, se mantiene invicto and still undefeated, Gimbeto Sudo. Once again, this is Zordo. Roberto, congratulations. Just your third fight campaigning at 175, facing a very durable guy, and you mow him down inside four rounds. What did you think of your performance? Uh, I think my performance was great, and I just want to say, uh, taking salt, 175, be bold. You're next. We'll get to what's next in a minute. But going into that third round, you were in control early on, and then you landed the big body shot that put him down for the first time. What were you looking for with that punch? Well, I was, uh, I was training, uh, I was training all the time for that shot, and uh, I think it was beautiful. <laughs> it was beautiful, and Viva Mexico, cabrones! Now take me through the end of the fight in that fourth round. Were you just hunting for those body shots? Yeah, I was. I feel. Uh, like, it was my best performance, I felt great in 175 pounds. Y pues, le quiero dedicar la pelea a todos los mexicanos, a todos los latinos. How do you feel at 175 as opposed to what you were at 168? Well, everybody see different uh, Zurdo Ramirez, and this is my division. I'm going to take all the belts, I'm going to take all the soul of the champions. You mentioned Dimitri Bebel. He has a title at 175. Do you feel you're ready for that type of fight next? You have to ask him if he's ready for me. Congratulations, Erdo. Thank you.